So what is the batch pattern? So in the batch pattern, you've given a set of items. You have a function f to apply to each of the items. And what you do in the batch pattern is you try to collect k items and batch them, which means you apply a modified function f on all items in the batch simultaneously. This may sound trivial, but I'm mentioning it here because it has been reinvented a zillion times in computer science and also in databases. So therefore, I think it's worth to explain this because this appears in many, many different situations. So what are the advantages of such a pattern? Well, of course, it might be cheaper to apply that function f on a set of items rather than calling f individually on each of the items. Drawbacks are you might introduce delays. So you might delay processing individual items. And therefore, in an implementation, it's important that you limit the time delay. This is also referred to as a latency for individual items. Very important. We're talking about the individual items that are coming in. So it's important to find the sweet spot of latency versus throughput. Latency of the individual items versus the overall throughput of the system is increased. One concrete example of the batch pattern is the elevator optimization. Elevator optimization. We've seen that when talking about the hard disk controller. But there are many, many more instances of that. So here's an example of this optimization trade-off you have to keep in mind. So let's first assume there's a non-batched calling of that function f. So assume this is a data item and that's being used as a parameter for function f. So maybe we can assume that those are seconds or it can be milliseconds or microseconds, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is just some time unit. So basically function f requires one time unit to execute given the specific input parameter. So here's an input item, it, you, you're calling f and then it takes one time unit to execute. Once you're done with that, you take the next item, input it to f, call it, and that takes another time unit to execute and so forth. So we do that here 10 times. So we have 10 calls to this function f. The sum of that is like 10 time units. However, in the batch situation, it may look as follows. Here, you use a modified function. This function may not exist for all problem instances, but often a function like that exists. So here in a function, you are able to pass not only a single item, but multiple items. So what I show here is the different items are coming in. Let's say it's five different items and there's a little distance in their arrival time. So here's like half a time unit till the next item arrives and you don't have to do anything at that time. You're just collecting the different items here. So once you have five items collected, you call function f. f with those five elements as a parameter. And then it might be that the execution of that function is relatively fast. It might have the same time as calling it individually. It might be a longer time, but hopefully the time to call f with five elements is faster than calling f five times with a single element. So in a situation it might look as something like that. So once f returns, new items come in, another five items, you call it again. And this means in total you're faster here in this situation than in the non-batched case. You took 10 time units to process the 10 items with a function f, here it took seven time units. Of course, those numbers may look very different for the specific case. We look at a number of special cases of that and then discuss the trade-off in more detail. However, important to understand here is not only this throughput. So we see that here the system took 10 time units to process 10 elements which means per time unit, you had 10 elements. This means you have 10 divided by 10 is one element per time unit is being processed. Here we had 10 elements processed in seven time units. 
This means we have a throughput of 1.43 elements per time unit. So this is a better throughput than the one above. That's what we want to have. And that's what we gain. However, there's a price, and that is a latency. So what is a latency? Here you see, once the element comes in, here you have the result and can return it. So the maximum latency here is one time unit. In contrast, in the batch case, you see this element comes in, it's just collected, it's um, just batched, and now you try to assemble five elements till you call function f. However, the latency with respect to this element is 3.5 seconds, it's this, yeah? because only at this point in time you have the result of calling function f on this element. So this is 3.5 seconds. For this one, it would be like three seconds, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And only for the la last element, it's kind of okayish. Yeah? So it's similar to what we have here. So what this means is, of course, the, the bigger the batch, the higher the latency for the individual elements. And that's what you're losing in this kind of situation. So it's always a deal, it's a trade how you balance latency and throughput in such a batch pattern. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did. Or you look at our website, infosys.uni-silent.de. See you there.